Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm going to be pixeling a logo for Dad Vader, uh, who's actually a longtime internet pal of mine. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel where he does streaming and vlogs uh, in English and Polish, always in a Darth Vader helmet. And he's planning to make some videos with a focus on retro gaming, so he wanted to get a special pixelated version of his logo to go along with that. So today I just wanted to share the way that I would go about translating a vector style logo like this one into pixel art. The first step for me, always, is to use something that I refer to as pixel vision. And that is to just scan the object and imagine some of the various small details within it as pixel art, including how they might look at different sizes of pixel art. And this is going to help us evaluate the pixel art dimensions that we can use for the logo translation. For instance, if we use Baby Yoda's eyes here as an example, uh, depending on how abstract we want to get with this, you know, we could go with single pixels for each of the eyes, or maybe two by two pixels. Or if we really want to capture a more rounded look for them, we might require going up to circles that have a four pixel diameter. But maybe that's not really the most critical detail to hinge the entire design on. I might decide that I want to make sure that the triangular form of Darth Vader's mask is nicely translated and plan it out as something like this. Or perhaps I want enough resolution to the point where I can actually see the individual lines within the triangle shape, in which case it'd be a sizing more like this. In some cases, some of the sizings here might be compatible with each other, uh, but I think you can see that depending on your point of reference for pixel sizing, you kind of end up opening up a bunch of alternate realities for what the final resolution of your pixel design will become. For my translation of the logo, I went the route of using the Vader helmet as the point of reference, uh, starting with that triangle shape. Since the whole point of this is to be an obviously pixelated version of that original logo, I tried to restrict the resolution as much as I reasonably could while still allowing for enough space to capture the important features. So right here I'm just making a few basic placements of the face, and I'll show you how I kind of cheat a little bit to find the placement for the rest of the design. Uh, that's not really cheating exactly, uh, but once I have a good idea of how much space that pixel design of the helmet is taking up, I'll resize the vector logo image into that space and try to line up the resize preview with my pixel design. Uh, when it actually renders the resize, it often looks a little bit different than the preview, so it does take a bit of trial and error to find kind of the right spot for that resized image. Alternatively, you could start off your entire design by doing the resize step first, and then just tracing over that resize logo to get the pixel design going, uh, but I find it's always best to have just a little piece of that initial pixel translation already made. That way you've already worked out that it's an appropriate resolution for your purpose. And also the resized version of the vector image isn't too coherent to look at, so I'm usually only using it as a rough guide for broad placement and silhouette, and for the most part I'm still basing my design decisions by comparison with the higher resolution image off to the side. You kind of want to look past what you know these objects are supposed to be, and just kind of consider how these things break down into simpler design elements. So maybe I'll just overlay some lines and shapes onto this footage to give you kind of an idea of how I'm thinking about this logo in my head while doing the pixel work. When there's a certain angle to translate, uh, like let's say for the silhouette of Vader's helmet, I'll first consider if it fits what I refer to as a pixel perfect angle, uh, meaning those that are built from repeating segments of you know one, two, or three pixels, etc. So I'll probably start by using whichever angle best fits that silhouette, and then you can always fine tune those segments if that's needed for additional tapering or clarity in the design. It's also okay to have fine details that don't make it into the pixel design. Like here we're going to entirely lose the nose and the mouth and the eyelids on Baby Yoda uh, because there's really just not a good amount of resolution to keep those and I didn't think it'd be good to just shoehorn them in for the sake of it. You kind of want to have to make sacrifices like this when making the pixel design. I find that's what makes for an effective translation into a simplified style like low resolution pixel art. And for me, that simplification is where a lot of the charm is. Making the text here follows suit. Uh, I start by doing kind of a rough trace of what I see, but then I go in after to clean up the line work by looking for those areas to implement pixel perfect angles and spacing, uh, even if it'll deviate slightly from what the original design would suggest. In order to give this a bit more retro flair, I thought it'd be fun to do a first pass at coloring using the NES palette. Uh, for the first version here, I'm selecting colors that are as close to the original logo as I was able to find within that palette, just to start from something that resembles the original color scheme. 
The application of shading here follows cues from that original logo also. Uh, luckily, it's more of a restricted cell shaded style rather than having, you know, these intense gradients of color. So that translates easily into the pixel design. I pretty much just use a single shade color for each color group and then a highlight for some extra shine in some cases, uh, like on the helmet and the Kylo mask. When you're doing work for someone else, uh, it's always beneficial to provide them a few options for presentations of the design if you can. So in this case, after doing that classic coloring, I went back through with the NES palette again and tried out more vibrant and stylized color applications. I've always liked the purpley and blue looks of the Jason Voorhees and Batman sprites for the NES, so I gave that kind of treatment to the Vader design to create this variant option. We both ended up really liking how kind of wild and retro it felt, and uh, after some fine tuning, I uh, landed on the final design here, uh, finished with just a simple white outline around the design to kind of pop the pixel silhouette of those characters as the focus. One of the fun finishing touches was replacing those PS4 style controllers of the original logo with the simplified NES style game pads just for that retro feel. And the other thing we wanted to do was bring a small touch of animation to it, just so it's kind of more dynamic as a YouTube video intro. So here I'm working out a way to fade the logo in, uh, but rather than doing a fade with opacity, I'm deleting horizontal strips of pixels from one of the frames, uh, leaving only 50% of the original pixels. Then on a second frame, I'll also delete vertical strips of pixels as well, to leave this sort of spaced out grid of pixels. When we play the animation back, you get something that resembles a fade in, uh, but it feels like the pixels are kind of morphing together, and it's just kind of a neat look, you know, almost like a hologram appearing into place or something like that. So I hope seeing this process kind of helped clarify how you might go about translating a vector logo into pixel art. And I'm just going to close out here with this bonus version of the design that I filmed on my CRT display. So thanks to Dad Vader for the collaboration, and thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.